I'm Daphne Richards, and this is Augie Doggie. Our question this week comes from Frank Simon. What happened to his Afghan pine that planted in 1996 as a living Christmas tree? It did well for years, but started to fail recently. This is a great question and unfortunately a common occurrence with Afghan pines, which were introduced into the nursery trade about 50 years ago. Since we, as consumers, are always on the lookout for new and different plants, we tend to covet what we don't have and you don't need to drive far to witness and covet the majestic pines of East Texas. And you might wonder, why don't we have more of those in Central Texas only a few miles away? Well, one reason is our soil. Pine trees prefer acidic soil and our soil is alkaline. Then some enterprising person noticed that the native pines in Afghanistan and thought, hey, these might be just the pines for us. And in some respects, they were right. Afghan pines do very well in arid, alkaline areas of the southwestern U.S. Unfortunately, central Texas is just on the cusp between east and west, so our climate is not quite westernly enough for Afghan pines, but not quite easternly enough for other pines. So, back to Frank's question. Why is his Afghan pine struggling now after having done so well for over 15 years? And the answer relates back to our climate. Although our soils are alkaline, which the Afghan pines prefer, our climate is not as arid as Afghanistan. Even in a low rainfall year, we still get about twice as much rain as the native area of this pine tree. And our air is also more humid. So these trees will do great until all the small issues that they have with our climate begin to pile up and exacerbate the problem, leading to a steady decline in health and an inability to recover. Our pick of the week is red yucca, Hesperallo parvifolia. Unlike its common name, red yucca is not really a yucca, and most of them really aren't even red. This plant gets two to three feet tall and about as wide, with a flowering spike that can add an additional two to three feet in height. It flowers from spring through summer, producing one set of blooms that lasts for quite a long time. Each flower bud will produce a seed pod containing many flat black seeds. If you want to harvest the seed, wait until the pods dry completely on the plant, then cut off the entire stalk and break the pods open to collect the seeds. Red yucca prefers full sun, but can take part shade. It's very drought tough, surviving on rainfall alone, even in the harshest of times. Since it survives so well on so little water, you might think it would struggle with heavy soils and overwatering, like other desert species, but it really doesn't. I've seen it be just as happy in clay soils as in sandy ones. Red yucca is used to good effect as an accent plant among areas of decomposed granite and rock mulch. It's evergreen with long narrow leaf blades and an arching habit. When you bring this plant home, it's likely to be quite small, but don't be fooled. Give these plants at least two feet on each side to spread out. And be careful if planting near Bermuda or other grass lawns. If grass or other weeds get up under this plant amongst those narrow leaves, it will be impossible to pull it out without completely digging the plant up and working from the root area, which would not be good for the red yucca. Hummingbirds do love the towering flower stalks, which range from salmon, the most common, to yellow to red. Deer also love the flowers, but they usually tend to avoid the plant itself. To do in your garden this week, it's time to divide your daylilies if you have them. We'd love to hear from you, so please visit klru.org ctg to send us your questions or plants of the week from your garden.